I don't love doing a folded hem. It's not my favorite thing in the world to do, but boy, does it look good when you do it right. Oh, <laughs> the needle went into my sweater. Oh, that's different. I need to knit four more inches and I'll knit two more rows and go, let me just check and make sure that wasn't four inches. Okay, now let's talk about the fun stuff. <laughs> This is also known as Nora Knits. Hello there, I'm Nora, and you're watching, also known as Nora Knits. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me for another podcast episode today. I am so excited. I have totally had my nose buried in my knitting over the past week. Here in Connecticut, we've had really all over the place weather uh, where I've been able to knit outside in the sunshine a couple of days, but then also just really rainy kind of gloomy days that were perfect for knitting on the couch or in my glider and just hanging out inside getting cozy with some knitting. So I've definitely made some progress that I am excited to share with you. And so I think we should just go ahead and dive on in. As you may be able to tell if you've been here before, I am indeed wearing a finished object. This is my stripeless Farnham tee by the Knit Pearl Girl. I say stripeless because the pattern is designed to have stripes, but I decided to knit this up without the stripes. This is something that I've knit in theme of the knit along I am hosting. It's called Stash Bus Spring, and you can use the hashtag Stash Bus Spring in the comments or over on Instagram to keep us in the loop with what you are knitting on with your stash yarn. That's the whole purpose is to avoid purchasing new yarn during this time, but definitely only knitting with stash yarn. So this was some yarn that I had in stash, and this knit along is running until June 21st. You are not expected to have a finished object at the end of it. Like I said, the objective is to knit with stash yarn. Use your stash and I'll definitely have the other sort of rules here, but by June 21st, as that date approaches, I'll let you know the best way to enter for prizes on YouTube. However, as long as you're posting on Instagram with hashtag stash bus spring, you are entering yourself in for a chance to win prizes. So this is the very first stash bus spring project I've got off the needles, and I'm just so thrilled with it. So first of all, the yarn that I used was a combination of Lion Brand Trubu in the colorway Khaki, and that is their bamboo yarn, the rayon from bamboo, right? And I held that together with Universal Yarns Universe 10th Anniversary Edition <laughs> in the colorway bronze, and that is a linen, cotton, and the tinsel strands blend, and I just couldn't be more thrilled with the fabric I've been able to get. So let's chat first a little bit about what was done since the last time we spoke, and then I will run through the finished object stats with you. When we spoke last, I was still wrapping up the full length of the sweater, and I was trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to complete all of the finishes, being the neckline, the hem on the sleeves, as well as the hem on the bottom edge of the sweater. The original pattern is written to have twisted rib along all of those finishing edges. However, I was feeling that this is sort of, I'm actually going to call this my fancy Farnham. <laughs> I feel like it was just a little too fancy, a little to t-shirt blouse driven to warrant such sweater finishes. And while I do think they could have looked nice, I was feeling more pulled towards a cleaner and more streamlined finish for this particular project. 
And so I was fielding suggestions because I really was so torn. I put this project aside for a few days because I really needed the sort of public input. And I so appreciate that. Before posting the podcast, I was considering doing a folded hem on the bottom and then maybe some rolled finishes for the neckline and sleeves. And it never even crossed my mind to do an eye cord. And then that was basically what everyone suggested to do in the comments. And I thought, okay, there must be something about this. Let me do the eye cord like everyone's saying. But also there was one comment in particular that just stood out. And if I had any doubt prior to that, it was the one comment that really sold me. And that comment said something along the lines of, I think if you do ribbing for the finishes, it's going to lean more sweater, whereas eye cord or rolled edges, folded edges are going to lead, lean more tee. And that was the selling point where I said, all right, if I was considering the ribbing before, we're not doing it. Let's really lean all the way into the t-shirt vibe that this is giving us, which is what I wanted all along. And I'm so happy I did. So I completely followed the general population's suggestion and did an eye cord on my neckline, my sleeves, and then I did a folded hem on this. I will definitely link down below the video that I had used to do the I-cord edge. I haven't done a ton of I-cord. I actually think that the only time I've done an I-cord was on the cuffs of my ranunculus. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. And I guess on the edges of my netty scarf. But as far as hems and stuff, the ranunculus is the only time I had done that. I'm always blown away by how simple it is to do an eye cord. So if that's something that you have been avoiding or putting off, I've got to tell you, it's so much more simple than you think. Think about it as a combination of just this standard bind off, but with slipping a couple stitches back and forth in the meantime. It's very simple. If you've done a standard bind off, then you can do an eye cord bind off. And I watched a video tutorial, so I will link it below. I did a couple of different things. So starting with the neck, based on the video tutorial that I watched, they were actually doing their eye cord bind off on cotton. And she said that she usually drops down a needle size for that on a plant-based fiber. And typically people say to go up a needle size for your eye cord edge because you don't want it to be too tight. I figured this is a particularly slippery yarn. Let me drop down the needle size for the eye cord. That way the neck will be as secure and stable as possible. And I am glad that I did that because it's basically exactly where it was last week before I picked up for the I-cord edge. And then I'm still getting a pretty wide neckline. You can see a little bit still of like clavicle in there. And it still goes over my head pretty easily, but I will say that there's no stretch to it. So I really stretch this all the way out in blocking. That's fine with me. When it came to the sleeves, however, I really wanted to avoid these being too snug. And so for the eye cord on the sleeves, I wound up just sticking with this same needle size that I knit the rest of the body in, which by the way, I believe was a 4.5 millimeter needle. So this was done in a four millimeter needle then. So for the sleeves, I stuck with the same size needle and that definitely has a little bit more give to it. The eye cord, I wouldn't say is sloppy, Oh, see, do you want to lay down? Good girl. Good girl. Sorry, Osi was looking for somewhere to lay. <laughs> Good girl, Osi bear. So the eye cord edge on the sleeves, I could definitely tell that those stitches are just a little bit bigger than the one on the on the neck edge. I think I could have gone either way, moral of the story, but I'm glad I did the way that I did. And then for the folded hem, I gotta tell you, I don't love doing a folded hem. It's not my favorite thing in the world to do, but boy, does it look good when you do it right. So I had done a folded hem 
on my all good dress that I knit last year that had all folded hems. And first of all, if you were here for that part of the journey, you've been here for a little bit. So thank you. <laughs> and in doing that dress with the folded hems, I learned a few things. And I was able to take those learnings and apply them to this tea. So something I hadn't done on that dress, but I learned after the fact and wish I had done was when I got to the point where I was about an inch from where I wanted the hem to sit in the stockinette in the body, I put in a lifeline. And I did that by putting some embroidery thread through the little hole on my interchangeable needle and I knit around and it was a little tricky because you had to kind of slide the stitches over it but I knit my way all the way around with that thread in there tied it off and it made it so much easier when I then had to go back to actually sew the folded hem to see exactly which row I was folding it to. I'll try to link that video down below. I'm not sure if I saved it, but if I did, I'm going to link that video down below for what I used for putting in that lifeline. So once I had done that, I started a row counter and I knit down that additional inch that I wanted to be made up of the fold hem, folded hem. I think it wound up being six rows, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think it was six rows, at which point I put in a pearl row. And that's basically what the edge of the sweater is now made up of, is that pearl row. It was like that in the all good dress, and I really liked the way that that looked. And then what I learned from doing those folded hems was for the remaining six stockinette rows that I had to do, I dropped down my needle size. So I went down to a size four millimeter. At that point, I was able to go in and pick up the stitches on the row that had my lifeline, and I did a three-needle bind-off to sew the hem down. It takes some time, but it's not so difficult, and I prefer it to binding off and then having to like whip stitch your way along the edge. By dropping down that needle size, it helps to prevent the hem from sort of flaring out at the bottom. And I think, I think it worked out. I probably could have maybe gone down even to a 3.75 millimeter needle only because of how slippery this yarn is. It's hard to sort of snug up stitches. So I think I could have even gone down a little further to almost have it cave in a little bit, but either way, in blocking, I was able to really polish up all the finishes. I wrapped this up. I let it soak for just about 15 minutes. I still used wool wash. I don't know if you're supposed to use wool wash when it's not wool, but that's just what I have. <laughs> so that was what I did. And then I was so careful to not let this hang because she's heavy. And I laid it out on the blocking mat. I just put in a couple of pins on the neckline, again, just to make sure that this was nice and stretched out. Otherwise, though, I didn't have to put any pins along the body. I just kind of mushed things right into place. And then all of the blocking pins I have were dedicated to the finished hem, where I put basically a row of pins at the point where this was seamed up and then a row of pins kind of pulling the rest of the hem down. And I think that that worked out perfectly. Overall, I am thrilled with how this came out. I actually just before filming today, sewed in all of my ends and I wound up leaving the tails on the longer side, I tried to do some knots and some weaving in since it is such slippery yarn, but I made a conscious choice to not really snip all of those ends any shorter than I had to for them sort of, you know, to not hang out the edges of, of any of the finishes just so that, <clears throat> God forbid, it does come undone. I still have a, an, enough room that I can sort of mend things up a bit. But being that I did just 
finish everything today, I can officially say today that the project is finished and off the needles, which means now we can move into some stats. This project officially took 37 days to complete. As I did just finish this, I didn't have time yet to actually go through my full spreadsheet. So I will just put the numbers up here as far as the sort of regular stats that I go through if I don't have it sort of in the back of my brain right now, but I can do some quick math. So I wound up using or tapping into four balls, each of the True Boo and the Sparkle Yarn. I know that the True Boo I had in stash three skeins and I purchased one additional, but I'm pretty sure I remember paying full price for the initial three skeins. And the one more that I purchased, I bought full price. Now, I think that the initial three I bought were cheaper in store. So I'm going to run with the initial three balls cost around $6.49 per ball plus the additional ball that I bought on Amazon, which was $8.36. The True Boo yarn cost about a total of $27.83. Now, for the Sparkle yarn, I purchased the four balls that I had last year at some point on a trip to Webs. I'm pretty sure that I paid either $20 or $30 for all four of the balls of yarn. When I look online, it says that this yarn is originally $11 a ball, but it was in that back room at Webs where things were on sale. So, so let's go ahead and call it $30. With those numbers, it looks like I paid about $57.83 for this whole tea project. And while that's more than I would probably spend on a tea, it was getting a lot of yarn out of stash. And I only had to purchase the one additional ball this year to actually complete the project. So if you girl math it, it really only costs about $8, $9. <laughs> Otherwise, I did purchase this pattern to complete this project. That pattern cost about $7.80. So in total yarn pattern, all in, this finished object cost me about $65.63. And it was a fun project to work on for a total of 37 days. I see myself getting a ton of wear out of this. And I have to say, if you can get your hands on that universal yarns, universe, sparkle stuff, I can't recommend it enough for holding with the Lion Brand True Boo. I have never worked, well, no, I've crocheted with the True Boo before on its own. But as far as knitting up the fabric, I, I don't have any finished knit objects in this yarn. However, I know so many people talk about how it's very heavy and very drapey. And this is very heavy and it is very drapey. But I can't help but think that that little strand of the linen and cotton is just helping to stabilize things a little bit. And hopefully over time will help to keep everything in shape just the way it should be. And... I don't know if I've even mentioned that the sparkle that goes through that universe yarn is both silver and gold, which just for me means absolute maximum versatility. The fact that the majority of this tea is this khaki color, which is a very sort of desaturated olive green mixed with the mauvey and purpy purpy, <laughs> mauvey and purpley undertones in that bronze universe yarn, plus that little skinny strand of black and then the silver and gold. It just goes with like everything. It's such a chameleon color. So I'm so excited to style this for the next little bit. I don't think I could really wear it on like the hottest of days, but definitely for most of the spring or if I know I'm going to be indoors in an air-conditioned environment, I think it's going to be great. I also knit this 
to a pretty long length for me, but I think it hits at just the perfect spot that even untucked, I think it looks pretty nice and just floaty, but I can always French tuck it, which I usually do, and I wear exclusively high-waisted pants, but I can also lift my arms up and work without showing anything I don't want to show. <laughs> And finally, just to wrap things up, I figured I'd show you just how much yarn I have left over, which is these sad little lots. So I definitely could have even gone longer or done folded hems on everything because there's plenty left over. So let's weigh this. In the True Boo, we have 21 grams of the fourth skein left over. And in the Universe Yarns, we have five grams of that sparkle tinsel left over. I'll definitely be storing these scraps together somewhere because I can imagine using them together for maybe a fun little accessory at some point, but for now, they're just going to the side. Now, in editing, I will make sure to total up just how much yarn that means I used, but a reminder, I knit this in the size G on the recommended needles. I could check too if I actually got gauge because I didn't really do a gauge swatch, so I will do my best to see, but it's a fairly oversized fit on me and I'm thrilled with that. Everything is just exceeded my expectations if it didn't meet them. And I feel like for the four balls of yarn, it's a great option for a summer tea. I'm just really happy. So we are done. <laughs> you will definitely see me wearing this again. But for now, that is our finished object of the week, the Farnham Tea by the Knit Pearl Girl. And if you didn't see last week's video, I will just reiterate, I cannot recommend the pattern enough. It's beautifully written, extremely thorough. I would say that if you plan to knit it with the stripes, you're going to have the most successful experience. If you plan to knit it without stripes, the pattern is intended for stripes. So you're going to have to sort through a lot of information that are that's dedicated to knitting with the stripes. So just keep that in mind if you're going into it, but nothing you can't handle. It's beautifully done. I'll definitely be knitting another one of the Knit Pearl Girls patterns. Love it. Okay, we should move on. <laughs> Now we can move into my whips, the first of which is the Sand Cardigan by Maria Isaeva of Ulin Knitwear, which I am knitting out of Noro Madara in the colorway 01 Sake. Every time I say it, I say Sake. <laughs> and I'm going back and forth between having this inside of a drawstring bag. Sometimes that's easier. Sometimes it's not easier. I think as it gets longer, the drawstring bag will become that much easier. But for now, I'm, I'm okay with just flipping it back and forth sometimes. So I've sort of tied the sleeves together back here to make that a little easier. And we're going to breeze through this guy today because, again, not a ton of progress was made. I know that there's a progress keeper on here somewhere. <laughs> it's on the back, isn't it? Hello, are you there? There he is. Oh yeah, maybe two inches of progress was made on this, so it's definitely not quite ready for the next phase of the pattern, which will be adding pockets. So let me just take this guy off and move it down. I think that I have come up with a sort of steady game plan for this, which is that I knit on this while we're watching soccer. And that's really the only time it's made its way out. And I kind of love that. It's, it's like, oh, it's time for soccer and it's time to knit on my sand cardigan. So I think that that's really fun. And... If I can figure out how to untie this, maybe I can just pop it on really quick so we can see where we're at. I imagine if I'm reserving this just for while watching soccer, <laughs> then it's probably not going to make a ton more progress over the next week. And so maybe even next week we'll be ready to start entertaining pockets, but probably honestly not even by then. But who knows? You never know. So I guess it's probably better to just know where we're at. <laughs> but I really did a great job of tying these sleeves together. Okay. <laughs> now, I'm not going to completely untie this. So know that for now, my sleeves are going to be kind of tied to my underarm and hopefully that won't cause an issue. But I'll pop it on. We can see. Straight 
strange feeling that was. The needle like went in. Oh, <laughs> the needle went into my sweater. Oh, that's different. Oh gosh, it's stabbing me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like I said, my arms are tied to my sides. And so actually it's at a great length if I just wanted a little cropped cardigan, but this is a duster. <laughs> I'll stand up. Okay, maybe that was a really good thing that we tried that on just now because maybe it is ready for pockets soon. I, since I have blocked half of this before, I know that it's not going to grow too much vertically just in blocking. I'm sure wear and tear is another story, but I know from blocking it that it's really not going to grow too much vertically. So I don't want to put the pockets too high, assuming that it's going to grow. But I think if I if I wanted to, I could put them in right now. I just think that my fear would be then if they're too high, when I do slip my hands into the pockets, I'm going to be pulling on the whole sweater. So I think actually, if I wind up knitting this about that two inches this week, that'll be the perfect time for pockets. So that's great news. I think that's a good place to be aware of. And I'll be mindful of my progress keeper to see if I do wind up knitting that additional two inches for pockets. So good to know. How exciting. We're moving along on this. Yay. All right. That's it. That's all I wanted to say about it. <laughs> I don't know why I just got strangled by that, but I did. So cool. Okay. <laughs> We're feeling scattered now. I'm going to tie my sleeves back together, but yes, I will keep an eye on this to be aware of the fact that if I'm going to knit anywhere past that additional two inches, it's going to be time for pockets. So this has been a whip for 60 days today, and that's the plan for the rest of it. I'm probably going to have to wind up a new skein soon, but that's that. Sand cardigan, Marie Saeva, Ula Knitwear, Naromadara, 60 days. Bam. Okay, now let's talk about the fun stuff. <laughs> Those long-term whips, they're just going to be like, I knit another two inches today. So I, that's it. Um, in more exciting news, I've made a ton of progress on my Azucena pullover, sweater, pullover. I always want to just say sweater, and I think it's pullover. Azucena pullover by Claudia Quintanilla of Unit Toronto. This pattern and yarn was generously gifted by Claudia and Unit Toronto. And I have been making some progress. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> this baby has been on the needles for 16 days to day. Those needles are a four millimeter needle. The progress keeper is hanging off the back there. Here she is. We made progress. We made so much progress, we had to bind off. <laughs> Let's talk about it. This is knit up in the Knitting for Olive Merino and Soft Silk Mohair in the main color brown nougat and the contrast color of cream. My first time working with Knitting for Olive. Beautiful yarn. This mohair is luxurious. So I'm loving that. I did not anticipate finishing the body this past week, but I'm not mad about it. And I'm about halfway through a sleeve right now. Woohoo! <laughs> so since we spoke, I was able to knit the ribbing, 
which is very fun because it is a color work ribbing. So you knit with your contrast color and you purl with your main color. I think that the back side is almost as pretty as the front side. That being said, said I did drop down as the pattern states to a 3.75 millimeter needle for the ribbing and as I was getting closer to the end I saw that the pattern calls for a standard bind off but I really do prefer an Italian tubular bind off so without even thinking I just started doing some setup rows and then realized that really did not work with the two colors and sort of knitting with one and purling with another to then go in and knit slip and then purl slip. I made it through that, but it wasn't so successful. And then I think I did about five stitches in the bind off of the Italian tubular bind off and it just looked horrendous. So I ripped that out, wound up finishing as the pattern states with a standard bind off in the contrast color. And I think it looks really great. And I should have just done that from the beginning. But that being said too, I just left those setup rows in there and it's, it's fine. I don't know if that's doing anything. Um, but it didn't seem worth it to undo that. So very happy with that. Right now it's flaring a little bit and I'm assuming that's just because it's not as stretchy or it doesn't have as much bounce back as a typical ribbing would. So it's just sort of hanging out and it's like flared out state because it is color work. I really hope when I block this that it will block out. But if my Farnham tea is any indication of what blocking can do, I think that we will have no problem. I have yet to try this on. I was holding the length up to my ranunculus sweater because I am sort of comparing this to the ranunculus as far as how I want it to fit and how I'm going to wear it and things. So I believe I knit this about the same length as the ranunculus, which just so happened to be about the exact length that Claudia says to knit from under the arm to the hem of the sweater in the pattern. So yay. I will try this on for you in just a second. Right now I'm working on the first sleeve, which such a relief there is no decreases. So I have a little tube of stockinette that I am happily plugging away on the way that I'm counting my rows so that I can then make sure the other side matches. Since there aren't any decreases, I've just decided to do something I've talked about before, which is make a row counter out of my stitch markers. I have a set of like rainbow stitch markers. So there's a bunch of different colors and I basically grab nine of them and put them in rainbow order. Roy G. Biv is our buddy over here. And the 10th one is a progress keeper so that I can knit down to the progress keeper, know that progress keeper is my 10th row, at which point I take a, another little stitch marker with a lobster claw clasp and I will pop that on each on the corresponding stitch marker in my row counter to count the tens. So right now it is on the one, two, three, four, five, sixth marker, which means I have knit 60 rows plus one, two, three, because that's what row I'm on. So I've done 63 rows in the sleeve so far. And basically when I get to the end, I will jot down that number and match it on the other sleeve. So that's my little tip for, um, it's really like a broke girl hack um, so that you don't have to buy a bunch of fancy gadgets. But also if you're just a little more minimalistic and you just want to use what you got, I use my stitch markers. Another way that I use my stitch markers is at some point I had held this up to my ranunculus to see how much knitting I had left to do, at which point I determined that I wanted it to be about four inches longer. So I actually, from that point, I had laid out my tape measure on the table and took stitch markers and lined them up until I had about four inches, which is about 
five stitch markers, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that wasn't exactly how much I needed. But I popped that on to the point where I measured and said, I need about four more inches of body from this point. And so I could continuously just keep comparing the length I had knit to my little row of stitch markers. And that way I didn't constantly bust out a tape measure because I have a tendency to do that too, where I will literally say, I need to knit four more inches and I'll knit two more rows and go, let me just check and make sure that wasn't four inches. So <laughs> I have that still hanging on to here because I didn't take it off yet. So First things first, let me measure the progress in the body that I had done, and then I will throw this thing on. Looks like since last week, I've done just over 10 inches of knitting in the body, and then, of course, picked up the sleeve and started that too. I will move our progress keeper now to the sleeve because I have a bad habit of not doing that. <laughs> there we go. And I will just put some needle stoppers on here and I should be able to just pop this on. Let's see. This is a look, isn't it? <laughs> just the one sleeve. Wow. I am knitting this in the size large. I never did a gauge swatch. I thought I would knit it in an extra large, but upon looking at the other people's project photos and the bust circumferences and everything and, and really considering how I plan to wear this sweater, which I think it definitely screams a little bit more of just a fancy sweater. I decided to knit it in the size large and I think I made the right choice because after blocking, I anticipate we'll just get a little bit more width out of this and I think everything's looking great. I will tell you, I just changed out of my Farnham tee and into this. So we're wearing this whole thing on bare skin. And I don't think I'm particularly sensitive to rustic fibers or mohair. And I can tell you, I could, I could wear this as it is. So I'm having no issue there. I think it just looks so cute. <laughs> The original design does have embellishments of embroidery and beading, and I think I will be adding that to the flowers in the yoke here. And I think that the fit is stellar. I'm getting, I mean, my underarm is right here at my finger, so I probably have about two to three inches of fabric just below that, and I think that's perfect. Probably two inches. So I don't have mohair way up tucked in there, but it's also not really low like a lot of circular yokes can tend to be. I think it's hitting at just the right height. I am hoping for these sleeves to knit them to about a bracelet length because I don't think that I want to be rolling up these sweater sleeves. And if I want to wear this at all while I'm working, I need them out of the way. So I think to knit them so that they're just really at that, you know, bracelet length, just where that pointy wrist bone is, I think would be really nice. I am. Yeah, this is fantastic. I don't think I have anything else to say about it. I just really like it. <laughs> it's so different from anything else I've ever made. It is my first color work project. And I think that in the hem that was done with the color work still, it was changing color every other stitch. I mean, it was knit in your contrast pearl in your main color. And my tension is really nice down there. So I think it's just a matter of getting my floats to a good tension where they're not so, so, so loose. But everyone said that this should block out. So I hope you're right. Even if it doesn't, I'm not mad. I'm not upset about it at all. I think it looks good for a first color work project. I also think that this is just a really amazing amount of progress for me for a size large sweater in 16 days on four millimeter needles. That's nothing to sneeze at. And um, yeah, I'm really just thrilled, honestly. This is part of Unit Toronto's Knit Along for the Asusena pullover. It does end, I think, in May. I never remember. So I'm definitely going to be done before then, but if I'm being extremely ambitious, I'd love to wrap this up in the next week, but you know how sleeves go. They tend to be so much more knitting than you even think. I mean, this is a full couple of days of knitting, so wow. Doesn't it just look pretty? 
ignore this arm. I love it. I'd never wear it with these earrings. But I just think that it's fitting so nicely, especially once this is blocked. So it should sit a little bit more like that. I just think that this looks so nice. I really love it. I stand by what I said. If you're looking to knit your first color work garment and you don't just want to dive in with as simple as possible, I think that the floats are manageable. I think you can do it. It's only color work till here. And then you've got stockinette. I think it's very doable. I stand by what I said. It's a good first color work sweater and it's my first color work anything. So that's coming from a beginner herself. Oh man. You know, it's been getting, um, it's been getting so nice out. And then it looks like we're going to have a couple weeks of this like fifties weather. So I'm hoping I can wear it just one day, maybe a particularly chilly, gloomy day. It'll work out, but man, is it pretty. It's going to be perfect for the holidays. Oh man, I love it. Eee! Love it. That's the Asusena pullover. Hooray. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the contrast in the weight of this garment versus this one is pretty incredible. <laughs> this weighs absolutely nothing, which is just, I mean, it's amazing. I also, I have to double check how much yarn I started with, but I think at this point I have used almost three balls of each the mohair and the merino in the main color and then I am still in the first ball for the contrast color so for a size large we're doing pretty well so far and yeah that's the Asusena pullover by Claudia Quintanilla on the needles for 16 days so super exciting stuff this week I think it's been a lot of progress a lot of knitting has gotten done and I actually, once I wrapped up the knitting of this and it's been on the blocking mat, I was chugging away with the Asusena pullover and it's stuck in that. And then of course I have my sand cardigan, which is knitting on the right side, purling on the wrong side. So I no longer had anything engaging since I had already done the yoke on the Asusena pullover. So I actually put up on Instagram what you guys thought I should do. Should I cast out a new project or should I just continue getting these whips off the needles? And you guys are a bunch of enablers. So of course you said to cast on something new and I have to agree. I told myself though that I could not cast on something new without swatching for it first. And by doing that, I was basically just trying to make sure that my Asusena in particular didn't fall to the wayside while starting a new project. So I think right now I might cast on something new, but really try to keep Asusena as my main priority knit. But I'm not totally sure yet. So I did swatch. I did block the swatch overnight. And so we are slowly chipping away at spring knitting plans. The next project I have planned is the Florence Tank by Sari Nordland. I also want to take a quick moment to say thank you because this pattern was very generously gifted from one of you off of my Ravelry wish list. So thank you so, so much. It always means so much to me when you guys do that and I very much appreciate it. So I'm so excited to show you this watch. I haven't looked at it since I threw it on the blocking mats, but this was something that I have been planning to knit out of this mystery cone of yarn that I keep getting the name wrong for, but it is, it said D, DK Verde Musco, which is moss green. And I knit up my swatch yesterday on the suggested needles in the pattern. And so I did literally just take this off the blocking mat along with my Farnham tea. And I'm happy to report that I think it looks beautiful. Did I get gauge? Not sure. The feeling is interesting. I think I maybe pictured it being a little bit softer or maybe it's just a little more I don't know if it's a matter of softness as much as it has a a what's the word 
like a velcroiness about it. Like, I can't say it's the most pleasant thing I've ever felt in my whole life. It did on the cone say DK Cash Merino. And so my wishful thinking glass half full brain said that that would be a cashmere merino blend. And I, I can't say that this feels as soft as cashmere or merino. But that's not to say that it's itchy. It's just not particularly <laughs> pleasant. My thought is maybe it's this whole issue of having spinning oil on it. So perhaps I will block it with some dish detergent like I've seen other people do. I just blocked this in water so it, it didn't get washed, washed. Anyway, I think it's going to be fine for my purposes. It just wasn't what I imagined it being. We'll see. I will check the gauge. I think if anything, it would be nice to maybe drop down a needle size because it's particularly open and I didn't pin out my swatch. I just laid it down. So this is pretty true to how the fabric should behave. So I'll double check the gauge, but this is the next project I'll be casting on is the Florence Tank by Sorry Nordland. And so hopefully by the next time we chat, there will be some progress made. Now, the last thing that I want to talk to you about today is acquisitions. And I know what you're thinking. Nora, it's Sash Bus Spring. We're not supposed to buy new yarn. And while that's true, I have made it clear that the main point of Sash Bus Spring is to knit through your stash. And if you're going somewhere like a yarn festival or something, like don't hold yourself back. Just cast on projects with stash yarn. And so... There's a local yarn store that's going out of business and everything in the store is 50% off. So I definitely did allow myself to make some purchases and I can't say that they'll even be the last ones. It was just what I immediately knew I wanted to pick up at that great deal to support this local yarn shop. And, you know, they need to sell through everything before they close down, which they said was at the end of June. The name of the yarn shop is called A Stitch in Time. So if you're in Connecticut, you might want to consider popping over there if you haven't already to help support the local yarn store as they are closing down. And so I just figured I would show you quickly what I picked up at 50% off and with specific projects in mind anyway. So this wasn't too frivolous. It was just something I was going to purchase later in the year. First things first is this Juniper Moon Farm Patagonia, Patagonia Organic Merino. And this is in the colorway Mulberry. It's this gorgeous, cranberry burgundy color. Absolutely adore this color. And I picked up one skein of this, but not to use on its own. This will actually be the contrast color in an upcoming color work project that I'll tell you about later in the year when I actually get to knitting on it. But the rest of the yarn I have here is, is for this project as well as some others. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> So here I have 10 skeins of the same yarn. This is the colorway Pearl. It's the exact same yarn. I just couldn't pass up such a good deal for a full dye lot of a neutral yarn. So like I said, some of this is intended to be held with this guy, which I think is just going to be a beautiful combination. And then the rest of it is intended for some other projects that I have in mind, but also it just seems like the best way to take advantage of the deal to buy some neutral colored yarn all from the same dye lot. You can never have too much of something like this. So this is pretty exciting. These Skeins are individually each originally $15 at the yarn shop. So I had purchased the 11 skeins for about $82.50. I think with tax and everything, we're talking more like $83, $84, but around $80 for everything, which I mean, it's really amazing. This skein of yarn on its own has 100 grams and 350 meters to it. So there's a lot of yarn here and it's really beautiful. It feels delightful. I'm so excited to work with this. So very excited about this purchase. And lastly, I just couldn't pass up their buttons that they had, which I think were 40% off for the metal buttons. But I want to say that they were each originally $1.50, something like that maybe even less, maybe like $1.15. Let's just say one, two, I got six but buttons. We'll just call this $6 to be easy. And 
Uh, these are, again, in mind for a future project. So figured I would pick up the buttons and yeah, very excited. So, so many exciting things over the past week. Lots of knitting, lots of acquisitions, lots of planning and progress. So I'm just really excited to sit down today and chat with you all about it because that makes it even that much more fun when you get to tell a friend. <laughs> so if it wasn't clear already, the final plans for the week are to cast on the Florence tank, hopefully finish the Azucena pullover. That would be amazing. And yeah, we'll just have to see where we're at in a week. So with all that, if you enjoyed this video and this style of content, I would so love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. If you subscribe and ring the bell, then you'll be notified anytime I put up a new video just like this one. I do post podcasts every Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for letting me know where you are and what time it is for you when these videos pop up. That's always really so cool for me to read. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. And with all that being said, a big ol' thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, you guys. Bye!